give art a sporting chance. Pierre de Coubertin, the French founder of the modern Olympic Games, was a proponent of Olympism, a philosophy of life that celebrates the mind as well as the body, the arts as well as athletics. To Coubertin, this philosophy had been best embodied in the ancient Greek competitions, which prominently featured artists as both performers and commentators. Determined to bring the ideal of Olympism to the modern games, Coubertin incorporated into the 1912 Olympics an arts competition called the Pentathlon of the Muses, the Olympic Decathlon, a series of 10 track and field events, was also introduced in 1912. The writer is considering deleting the underlined sentence should the sentence be kept or deleted. So here in the first paragraph, I'm saying that Coubertin was interested in both athletics and the development of the mind. And so in the 1912 Olympics, he introduced something that was inspired by the original Greek competitions, the pentathlon of the muses, which was basically related to arts. So the decathlon, which is a track and field event, uh, was also introduced in 1912. That's not relevant at this stage because the focus here is arts, the development of the arts. So I should delete this sentence because it mentions information that lacks relevance to the main topic of the passage. So that's a good point because it's not relevant. Deleted because it does not indicate who was responsible for introducing the decathlon. So that's not the point. Uh, we don't need to know who introduced it. The sentence itself is irrelevant. So it's C. Coubertin spent the loan which awarded Olympic medals for achievements in architecture, literature, music, painting, and sculpture, and which was a part of every Olympic Games until 1948. So here my main sentence is Coubertin's pentathlon was a part of every Olympic Games until 1948. And this part is additional information, which awarded Olympic medals for achievement in architecture, literature, and so on. So this and which is not correct, because if I say and which was a part of every Olympic Games, then I need something else to be said after 1948. So it's not A. Um, I can't say that was a part, because that also will leave it hanging. And if I say and was a part of every Olympic Games, then it assumes that this which part is an independent sentence, it completes the sentence and that it does not. So you'll just delete the underlying portion so that the sentence makes sense. Regrettably, these competitions ceased due to a technicality. Professional athletes were prohibited from competing in the Olympics games. And it was argued that professional artists, in other words, any artist who had ever sold a painting or sung for money should be ineligible as well. Okay. So professional athletes were prohibited from competing in the Olympic Games. The way it's written looks good. So I like A. Professional athletes were prohibitive of competition. No, that is not correct. I don't need the adjective here. I'm saying that the athletes were barred from competing. So I need a verb. So it's not B. Athletes were to be prohibited to compete. Now that's not correct because... To be prohibited indicates that it would happen in the future, while here I'm saying that the games were seized in 1948, so they were prohibited, that action was done, so it's not C. And they were being prohibited to competition, so this is wrong because that being indicates continuous and that is not correct, and prohibited to competition is also wrong, so the best answer is A. Coubertin himself won a gold medal in literature in 1912. Which choice provides the most effective conclusion to the paragraph? So here I'm saying that the pentathlon of the muses was stopped because uh, it was argued that just as professional athletes could not compete, a professional artist should be ineligible as well. So the fact that Coubertin won a gold medal is not relevant to this discussion, so it's not A. Some wonder whether this chapter in the history of the Olympic Games deserves more attention. 
Um, so yeah, this could work as a conclusion. So let's keep it for now because we are saying that there was this brief period in which the Olympics held competitions for artists. and uh, But I don't know if some wonder whether this chapter is a good way to finish it. So let's come back to this option. Lacking eligible participants, the pentathlon of the muses was discontinued. Yeah, so this is the perfect conclusion to this paragraph because it was argued that professional artists should be ineligible as well. So because there were no eligible participants, the competition was discontinued. So C definitely better than B. Still, the participation of artists in the first modern Olympic arts competition was minimal. Okay, so this talks about the first arts competition, not the end of the competition. So not relevant. C is the best answer. Although the ban against professionals competing in athletics has long since been rescinded, and the International Olympic Committee's attempt to restore the arts competition has been tepid at best. So here I'm saying, although the ban against professionals competing in athletics has long been rescinded, although this has been done, the IOC's attempts to restore the arts competition have been tepid. So this and is not correct because I already have a dependent clause starting with although. Uh, this yet is not correct. And this semicolon is also not correct because it comes between two independent sentences. Does and semicolon not correct. So just resigned it with a comma would be correct. Now here I need to decide the correct verb. And this is the verb for attempts, right? The IOC's attempts have been tepid at best because attempts is plural. So my verb should also be plural, have been, right? Has been, is being, was. These are all singular. And was is also wrong from a tense perspective. So the best answer is B. In 2000, the IOC instituted a sport and arts contest to foster an active synergy between the worlds of art and sport. One commentator noted that the exhibition of winning entries had the feel of little more than a photo contest at the local library. Take the example of Omnipotent Triumph, a 2012 prize-winning work of sculpture by US artist Martin Linson, representing a Paralympic athlete triumphantly crossing the finish line, the sculpture is a relatively small work made of bronze. And uh, what does it say here? However, the lack of publicity about the competition consigned Linson's work to virtual obscurity. Okay. The writer wants to suggest that the sculpture was consistent with the philosophy of Olympism, which choice best accomplishes this goal. So if I say it's a relatively small work made of bronze and I'm not really appreciating the sculpture and definitely not seeing that it's consistent with the philosophy of Olympism, evocatively fuses athletic and artistic achievement. So that's a good uh, way to put it because the sculpture was about an athlete. And so it evocatively, which is to say something that conveys an idea beautifully, so it evocatively fuses athletic and artistic achievement. So I like B. The sculpture memorably reflects Linston's distinctive approach to representing human anatomy. No, so that's not the point here. It's not about the human anatomy. So it's not C. The sculpture shows the athlete making the victory sign with his arms. Uh, that's okay, but that would not satisfy the question's demand to show that the sculpture was consistent with the spirit of Olympism, so B is the best answer. However, the lack of publicity about the competition consigned Linson's work to virtual obscurity. Okay, so to consign his work to obscurity, that is good as it is, so I like A. Now, consigned and then relegated, this is repetitive. To consign is to relegate, so it's not B. Consign the sculpture by Linson, since not many people had heard about it. 
So the fact that not many people had heard is already mentioned in the lack of publicity. So this is repetitive. Lead is not correct because I need to say that the lack of publicity consigned his work to virtual obscurity, right? Not led to virtual obscurity. So A is the best answer. The writer wants to add the following sentence to the paragraph, but the IOC awarded no medals for the contest nor did it do much to promote the contest to visiting spectators and journalists. Where should the sentence most logically be placed? Okay, so I'm saying here, if you start from the first one, although the ban against professionals competing in athletics has long been rescinded, the IOC's attempts to restore the art competition has been tepid at best. And then we say in 2000, the IOC instituted a sports and arts contest to foster an active synergy between the worlds of art and sport. And then I'm speaking of a point of criticism. One commentator said that the exhibition had the feel of little more than a photo contest. So obviously between two and three, this should come because I'm saying that the IOC started this new contest, but it awarded no medals, nor did it do much to promote the contest. So that should come after sentence two before the point of criticism, right? So after sentence two, reinstituting the pentathlon of the muses as a high profile Olympic competition would provide valuable international exposure for artists. If artists were to receive medals during the Olympic games, just as athletes do, and if the competitions were broadcast to the estimated 4 billion viewers tuning in worldwide, talented artists such as Linson were reaching a much broader audience. So here I'm talking about uh, what would happen if artists were able to receive medals, right? So this is something that is not happening currently, but if it were to happen, then talented artists would reach a much broader audience, right? So when you have a hypothetical, you say would, if we were to reinstitute the pentathlon, then talented artists would reach a larger audience. So were reaching, had reached, will reach, right? None of those convey the hypothetical, so D. The effect on artists would be considerable, but the greatest change would be the effect on viewers. Much as the Olympics athletic competitions have inspired people around the world to embrace sport and exercise, reinvigorated artistic competitions could promote enthusiasm for artistic achievements and restore Kubertin's idea. Okay, so here I have to talk about the fact that people have been inspired to embrace sport and exercise, right? So to embrace in this context would mean to begin to do something, to accept the idea of, so that makes sense. To envelope is used in the physical sense of to cover something, right? So that doesn't make sense here. To encompass is to include something. For example, the CEO's new plan encompasses a number of great ideas to revive the company. So that doesn't fit the context of people embracing sport. So it's not C. And to admit is to accept that something is true. So that also doesn't fit the context. Okay, let's grade this. 23. C, D, A, C, D, B. C, D, A, C, D, B. B, A, B, D, A. B, A, B, D, A. Okay, great. So we got all correct. 